Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Words on Whiskey, proudly brought to you by Irish Whiskey Magazine. And uh, I hope you had a, a good break last week. We we enjoyed the one week off, so thank you for that. Uh, this week, we have a very different show, and as we like to do, we, we like to give a, a more global picture of what is happening in Irish whiskey and to highlight those that are really contributing to its success. And I think tonight is no exception in the sense that the farming industry, the cereal farming industry is really the bedrock of the Irish whiskey industry and their contribution is often overlooked. And what we'd like to do is share an insight with you this evening with our guests who will share with us his experiences and his challenges and his uplifts with Irish whiskey and providing us with the great grain that gives us great whiskey. So in order to do that, I'm going to invite in Bobby Miller, who is an arable farmer in Strad Valley, County Leash. Uh, a long history of cereal farming in that region. And of course, a region that is synonymous with producing fantastic grain that we can enjoy in our whiskey. So I'm going to invite in Bobby Miller. Good evening, Serge. And good evening to all your listeners there as well and viewers. Thanks good very evening, much for yes. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Bobby, and I, I really appreciate it because I know you've been in a very busy period sowing the seeds and uh, getting ready to provide us with some great grain. Yeah, yeah, no, we're after coming through a very, very busy period there the last month or so, um, yeah. getting the spring crops uh, on our farms here and looking after the winter crops that we have on the farm as well. So uh, it's been a very busy period there and I only got the last of my crops in last week, so... Uh, just... uh, all sown, all ready to go? Yeah, I was, uh, would you believe, I was actually, actually sown a few uh, potatoes for myself there today for the family use. Uh, that's the last, we consider that the last of the sowing on yeah. our farm on potatoes for, just for our own use. Uh, yeah. but, um, we're after getting a fairly decent run of weather to get all the crops in, uh, spring crops in, and look after the ones that are already in the ground, as I say. Yeah. So content enough, content enough at the minute as regards uh, getting the crops in and looking after the crops. Yeah. I mean, is there ever a quiet period in, in, in your business? I, yeah, well, the way I describe tillage farming is, I suppose, like uh, in, in the athletics, uh, athletics term is... We're probably 800 meter sprinters or 1500 meter runners rather than marathon runners. Uh, we have to be ready to move when the weather uh, agrees with us. You know, that's the way tillage farming is. We're totally weather dependent on getting work done. Uh, yeah. So that's, we do have quite periods. We do have uh, very, very busy periods after, just like at the present. We're just very busy uh, going from early morning to late in the evening and training. Well, yeah. and then you have a podcast to contend with as well. <laughs> yeah, and you sent me a text there in the middle of a the field there, what I saw in the middle, in the middle of the field, but uh, I knew I'd be a bit quieter this week, and I was more than happy to yeah. uh, be like tonight. And uh, I, we were talking earlier there, and it's you were down on the farm here yourself. Yes, it was. Yeah. 17, yeah, I couldn't believe it was that long. I know. The, where does the time go? And, and we've talked about having you on the show now for for a while, and I'm glad we got the opportunity now to to get your voice in and, and uh, get an insight. Tell us a little bit first, Bobby, about how how you got involved in farming, uh, a little bit about your farm, where it is, and what kind of acreage you're dealing with. Yeah, um, I'm based here just out Stradley in County Leash for the electric picnic, is, I suppose we call it electric picnic country these days. Uh, I own just over 100 acres and I lease another long term lease, another 80 acres uh, pre presently. Uh, I have four crops on, me, four crops on my farm. Uh, I've, I suppose the first crops against the ground, so it will be winter barley. Uh, they'll be sold early October, and then I have a crop. Is gluten free oats is my next crop. I try to get that in, in late October, and that's the and then come springtime. I have beans. I'm where I'm recording this now. I'm looking how I feel the beans are present. That I saw it in early March. We tried to get them in one of the first crops we get in, and the last crop I got in then uh, is the spring barley, uh, which was in it's in a couple of weeks now. But I actually had some oats to sow as well for uh, cousin of mine as well. So 
that's okay. the crops I have on the farm. Uh, that's what and is there, a, is there a rotation scheme then as well that, that occurs? or? Yeah, we are guided by EU guidelines here. We uh, The size of my farm, depending on the size of your farm, I have to have three different crops on my farm. Uh, but there is there's benefits to that as well. Uh, each crop uh, basically gives a boost to the, the following crop in ways. Uh, you take the bean crop there, uh, that will the following crop will get a, a, a yield increase because I have been sown. Uh, to do there's a lot of technical stuff. Uh, tillage is a very technical business. There's a lot of technical stuff. The driving the tractor up and down, tractor up and down the field is nearly the easiest part of it these days. Uh, a lot of paperwork involved. Uh, everything we do or our crops, we have to record uh, what we do with the, the husbandry of the crops. And so sure. uh, we spend, when we're not, uh, quite time, you're probably doing paperwork. And, yeah. you know, uh, that's the reality of it as well. And we have to keep that up to date for yeah. regulations purposes. And, it helps promote the use of our grain as well, um, yeah. as well. So that's. And is it a is it a family farm? Is there a long heritage there? Have you a long history of farming in your family? Yeah, I have a long history of farming in the family. My father actually, the farm we have, I am on here. My father actually bought sixty odd years ago. Would you believe? We're only uh, we're only talking about nineteen fifty nine. He bought the farm. We only talked about the other day. Yeah. Uh, he's trying to remember many uh, springs he was here doing the spring work you know and he's retired a few years now he helps out a little bit um he's living here with me in the in the, the home house here where i'm located at the minute and i'm married and i have a stepson and i have a daughter as well that's two year old as well and so yes the the, the the daughter is a new arrival since we last were down so congratulations yeah, 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 yeah the terrible twos at the minute so you might hear at some stage ah, <laughs> sure. in advance if you do hear but uh and son Kyle, he's working there present and he sent the college in in september which is great for him as well and just passed his driving test so he's truly himself all, all right okay excellent so it'd be yeah. tell me are you are, are you quite isolated where you are or is it part of a, a strad valley area I, I myself am just a mile outside the village of Stradley. Right. I walked 20, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and it was nice to go in and social when you were able to socialize when the pubs were open. I'd be able to walk into town and perhaps walk on home as well. But yeah. uh, I'm not that isolated. I'm one of the first farms out my road. So I'm, some days, like around about when, when we're in normal times, some days you think there's a roundabout was at the, at the entrance of the that Yeah, yeah. Biz. And so. We like to we like to think our back doors always open to everyone and anyone. So and that's yeah. the, the farm you have here. Yeah. Tell me, you, you mentioned your the size of the farm. It's less than two hundred acres, is it? Yeah, I own a, is... or just over a hundred and lease another eighty. Uh, it'd be actually one of the small in today's terms. It'd be one of the smaller size stage farms. I uh, yeah. do a little bit of contract work off farm as well, and. And chairman of Irish Grain Growers as well, so that keeps me busy. I have, I personally don't have any quiet time, I suppose, and constantly at something somewhere. Uh, yeah, time, so. well, I see you very active on social media. So if anybody wants to follow Bobby, he's also with the Irish Grain Growers Group on, I think Twitter it is, and, Twitter and oh. Facebook as well. Irish and Grain Facebook. Growers. Yeah, and we actually only launched our Instagram page this week as well because of Arable April. Uh, yes, new rel relatively new thing that the tilly sector has taken on board or that we've started up. Terry's grain growers are front runners on it. It's, it's in its third year, and it's proven very successful. It's if anyone just hashtags Arable April and wants to get uh, more of an insight uh, on how the, the tillage industry works here, uh, it's more well work just yeah looking at later after the show or any time during the year just to give you an idea of what's what. Yeah, uh, what are they covering we, actually? Pardon? What do they cover in that Arable April uh, hashtag? Uh, everything. I, 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 you'll see me doing work. You'll see other farmers around the country doing work. You'll see parts of the industry getting involved. We actually have uh, uh, one of the distilleries coming on board this in the next week or two, uh, just to give an insight on to, uh, and, uh, and what they're at inside their gates. Uh, we have um, just yesterday there was a uh, uh, a vegetable grower in North Dublin uh, did a did a few hours, you know. So it covers uh, the industry is getting involved a bit more as well. It's growing legs, so it's just getting more popular. And 
it's the the farming media is covering it as well. So it's I suppose the best way to find out what's going on is so I just go look and if it might be interesting, it might not. I gave uh, the I was going around my farm for a day last week, uh, just doing short video clips explaining what's going on in the farm and yeah. the bits of machinery have. So we're trying one thing I suppose the Tilly sector has been lacking uh, here in Ireland is promoting itself and this is the idea of it. Uh, yeah, to promote and rightly sector. so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Tell me, uh, in ter- in terms of uh, the whiskey industry and the growing yeah. whiskey industry, has that put extra demand on on all the cereal farmers, all the barley farmers? It should demand. Uh, <laughs> that's a hard question to answer. We look. We know we are after going through COVID times, and demand just read last week where beer sales have dropped, and that affects. The Tillage farmer as well, as a yeah. result, uh, I think they're back 20%. And I, I actually don't know on whiskey sales, maybe you give me an idea there yourself where they have been. But yes, uh, what happened, what's sold over the counter affects the Tillage farmer as well. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, and typically, who are your customers? So, who are you supplying to? Not just in terms of uh, barley, yeah. obviously, is going to the malting houses, I presume. Malting Company of Ireland and and Boer Malt, uh, yeah, would be the big, the, yeah, the biggest. Boer Malt, Boer Malt are by far the biggest, and then come the Malting Company of Ireland, and yeah. there's one or two small uh, businesses as well up and running in a couple of years. I can think of Argyll and Malt there down in Kildare there, just to name one. Uh, yeah. Basically, we grow grain, uh, spring usually spring barley. Now winter malting barley is uh, a rel- relatively new thing to happen here in Ireland is in probably second or third year, but it is growing uh, that we can grow winter malt and barley uh, here in this country. And, it's and, and that's usable That's usable for distilling, is it? Um, actually, not quite sure that. I, I, I'll show me ignorance on that part of it. But yeah, if the, I suppose if the, if it meets the criteria, yeah, I can't see why it shouldn't be. Uh, they, I, yeah. I, I don't know how fully aware your viewers are on the number of tests when we deliver our grain to oh yeah huge there's about 20 tests done on our grain uh, as we wait to see will the grain pass um and you know one of them is the protein level in the grain uh, which dictates basically where uh, the grain goes uh, whether yeah. it goes to uh, for the brewing industry or the distilling industry or doesn't get past at all and it's only it can only go for feed so yeah. So when, you're, so when you're dessert, uh, when you're deciding on what variation of barley, what type of barley to actually plant, you're given yeah. guidelines by Chagas, is it? Yeah, the, the, the Chagas, the, the brewing companies themselves, the distilleries themselves. Uh, it's uh, as uh, the sea, there's especially the sea companies as well that grow these. Uh, it's not just a. Uh, all of a sudden, your decision is made in March. And it's a, probably a five-year lead-in t- a period just to get the grain. Oh, uh, really? There's new varieties being developed all the time. New varieties being developed all the time by the sea companies here. So basically, the sea companies go to the brewers and the distillers and say, "What do you what do you require? What's uh, what do you want to try something different?" And yeah. and the farmer uh, has to be commercial. It's has to be commercially viable, which means uh, that the farmer is happy to grow it as well. Uh, it, it meets like we the husbandry involved in growing crops is quite specific as well. Uh, we have diseases to deal with the height of the straw, whether the straws and the grain, the quality of the grain is good enough. The bushel weight, there's several different factors. It's a very complex subject. Yeah, uh, tell me, is it all is it all two two row barley that's grown in Ireland? Um, no, no. For the brewing and distilling, uh, nearly all of it is, and practically all of it is at present. Now, they are trailing six raw varieties, yeah. which is uh, hybrid barleys. Now, they are they're a little bit of a game changer f- for the feed industry because they're higher yielding uh, mm-hmm. crops. Uh, they're, relatively, they're here a few years now at this stage, but uh, they're more, there's more confidence from farmers to grow the, the, the crops, uh, these hybrid barleys now, six row barleys as they're called. But they can be, they are be tested to be used in the brewing and the distilling industry as well. So they are. Can I ask you the difference between brewing barley, distilling barley, and barley used for feed? 
It's the same seed sown, but the criteria determine what it goes to. Is that correct? Yeah. Basically, every we talk about the seed companies there. There is that develop the new varieties. The, uh, basically, every grain grown here, uh, developed here, is specifically uh, is targeted towards the, the brewing and distilling industry here. Uh, for number one, is not. Uh, so all grains are practically the same uh, in that regard. That they are all they're targeted to, towards that industry. But to happen, if they happen to be good, a uh, good feed variety, so be it. Uh, well and good, you know, and maybe not used for brewing and distilling. Yeah. But uh, um, there's no specifics on the different varieties for for um, for the in general for the brewing and distilling industry, you don't pick one particular variety for say brewing and one particular variety for distilling. Say, or just okay. generate different varieties. It's basically it does come down to the protein level in the grain at yeah. harvest time when you go in and test it. Uh, you take we need a protein level for your distilling industry. You need a protein about eight point five or sorry nine point three nine point four that and lower down to say. 8.5, 8.5 up to 9.5 is where the distillers want that. And why they want that uh, le particular level is to be able to harvest more alcohol per ton sure. uh, for, for having it at, the, at that particular level. Uh, so lower we, protein means higher starch, is that correct? I think it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It means more, to get more alcohol bang for the buck, I suppose, the best way of putting it, um, higher yeah. starch. Levels. And now, there is other factors that come into play but the biggest the biggest decider for the farmer on on the day when he's delivering his grain is the protein level uh yeah. there's several other tests that has to be passed there's a disease called fusarium and if there's too much fusarium on the grain it gets failed if the screenings which are small or too, uh, small grains if you yeah. had a bad season you know there's about 20 different factors to come into play uh, so I know moisture is one of those. Uh, I think yeah. the size of the bushels is another. The protein, they're all factors, and I'm sure there's many other. Is is are the criteria for distilling the the strictest? They're, they are the hardest to meet. Yes. Yeah. The strict. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, the, the husbandry of the crop, you know, um, brewing is. You have a protein level to reach under 11.2, 11.6, depending on the customer. Yeah. Um, it's that's uh, easier to get. It's just the nature of the beast of, of the grain. You know, it's easier to get that uh, standard. Uh, usually, what's involved, a lot of it is dictated by the weather. We we can only do so much uh, looking after the crop, uh, the amount of fertilizer, uh, the the amount of fertilizer applied. Um, does influence it, but the weather is the biggest influence or where, uh, whether what standard it gets to. And it is yeah. um, like the contracts we the farmers have uh, basically between about 30 to 40 percent of the grain has to be to distilling grade and the rest is brewing grade or it fails in both grades as well, which uh, yeah. about a third of the grain that's grown. Uh, when you put into the ground at the start of the year, on average, about a third of it fails both specifications. And right. you're distilling okay. the hardest to get to. Uh, you're you you're actually picking your fields to a degree as well, which uh, fields you're going to grow. Uh, distilling yeah. grade barley for uh, there might be the least fertile field because uh, uh, the protein tends to follow the amount of nitrogen and the quality of the ground as well. So. Yeah, so what what does uh, what are the criteria that affect the the quality of the barley then? Is it obviously weather and soil? But what kind of soil yeah. does barley like? Um, uh, barley, I suppose, is like your your pet child. You have to look after it. other crops. You you don't have to be so. Uh, if barley doesn't like hardship. Is the, I suppose the best way of putting it. Uh, good fertile soils. Uh, the soil I have here is, is a medium clay is the type of soil I have here, but it'll grow on sandy ground and it'll grow in various type of soils. Not so mad about heavy type soils, but it will grow on um, every type of soil uh, yeah. at the end of the day. But a good, it has to be good fertile soil. You're talking about your soil index, which is a technical term, is the, uh, how fertile your soil is. We like we test our soils to see uh, uh, 
parts per million uh, of particular uh, trace elements and everything. There's a few good few factors built into it. Uh, yeah. um, you pick your fields and rotation is another thing. Like I mentioned it before, we have yeah. a job, so three minimum three crops. I have four on my farm, and that mm. comes into into play as well. You can't you can grow barley contain in the same field continuously, but from you you could start running into problem problem weeds on your farm and other very you, you you're building uh, resistance to. Uh, diseases and whatnot on the farm as well, you know. So it does, it does pay to sort um, rotate your crops around as well. So yeah, there's a question it, in it, here from uh, Will Keating, and he's asking about your thoughts on heritage grains. Yeah, it's not a thing I know a huge amount about. Will to be honest with you, uh, it's bringing back the old varieties. I do know a farmer that's actually grown them this year for uh, board malt and there's a few uh, there's I think there's some up in Monaghan as well as the biggest uh, I suppose uh, I can't think of their names I think you had them on the show maybe I'm wrong there Serge uh, yeah. they, they I not I know expert on it Will uh, in, on that regard um, it's it's how would you say uh, it's a new avenue to approach uh, for the distilling industry to use heritage uh, grains? I know you had Mark Rainey on before there from Warford Distillery, and he's uh, chasing that uh, heritage barley's. Uh, yeah. I know Amanda Farsi de Leash for some counties. Me is growing heritage grains for for that particular reason, yeah. but it's not a huge thing I know about. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, but uh, obviously another marketing tool that could be exploited. Absolutely, absolutely. In, in terms of how the industry has changed and developed over the last number of years, Bobby, what do you see as the the biggest differences now between, you know, farming today as it was maybe fifteen twenty years ago? Um, there are plenty of changes. Technology is uh, coming more and more into focus. Like I have a. A sprayer on my farm here to spray the crops with, and uh, there's 14 satellites up to 14 satellites track that sprayer while I'm driving up and down the field with it. Uh, right, that's like the technology that's associated with farming. Uh, that's one of the biggest changes. The mobile phone actually is one of the big changes as well. We get a huge amount of information from that. Uh, we take the chemical companies, the sea companies, the you know, if you want information, is there available to you? Uh, as yeah. well uh, uh, tractors uh, uh, new tractors have auto steer on them which means that uh, the tractor will guide itself up and down the field uh, that you don't actually have to steer it uh, all right change. okay yeah yeah um, I, I, I understand I understand the internet of things is starting to change things as well where you monitoring of soil conditions and moisture levels throughout the farm is that something yeah. you're involved with it's it's a new is not too widely used here just yet. Uh, there's a cost a cost element to it, and we have to train ourselves, uh, educate ourselves on it as well. Like we, so you can get a satellite imagery of your crops as they grow. You can get you can actually get drones to fly across uh, your fields while they're growing and point out different areas of your fields that might need a specific. Uh, treatments uh, or husband, husbandry involved, so it's, it is getting very uh, high tech uh, yeah. in that regard. Uh, uh, the technology involved in tillage farming is 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 uh, is really um, mind boggling at times, and it's hard. It's sometimes it's hard to keep up with. But um, we'll see robot tractors. We we'll see electric tractors coming down the line. We we'll see hydrogen driven tractors. Uh, you know as well the farmer. I could be doing a lot of my farming from the office in future. If, really? If I'm, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know of a video lately that I saw where there's five combines, not not in Ireland, uh, five drive combines going down the field and one driver. He was many, able to take, manage the four, other four combines as they, as they drive down the field. So yeah. there's that type of technology there as well. Uh, whether it'll work in Ireland, uh, time will tell. But machinery yeah. is gone bigger. As well, we're at, uh, there's, um, we don't need as much manpower on the farm uh, than compared to say 30, 40 years ago. Uh, yeah. 
we were able to do s- stuff so fast now in, in so many ways. Uh, like I have some part-time help here on my own farm during yeah. the busy period. Uh, and that's an able to manage the rest of the, uh, myself and do extra work off farm as well with, for contract work. And yeah. obviously run, help run the Irish grain growers as well. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, I mean, I've heard of cases where I've seen uh, fertilizer being applied by drones as well even. So I, yeah, I guess. yeah, 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 yeah. What happens? Just to expand that a little bit, you get your drone to fly over the crop. I, or the farmer, then comes along and reads the information that the drone has has provided, and right. he has to say a fertilizer spreader behind the tractor, and the fertilizer spreader is able to apply more fertilizer in one part of the field and less in another part of the field. And the same with sprayers. We have sprayers now for uh, applying uh, onto crops, and there's cameras on the sprayers um, wow. that's able to pick up different types of weeds and yeah. able to re- pick up different types of. And we are in a position you probably have, from an EU point of view, the farm to fork strategy and getting greener, greener and. We have yeah. to reduce that, or we're supposed to use our chemical usage by 50%, which is a huge challenge. But yes. it, uh, it can be met. It can be met, um, uh, I, I believe. But it, would, it takes, it's going to take research and development as well. And technology like this it will help us um, yeah. along the way. You know, there's huge, huge, there's huge advancements advancements in technology. So yeah. it's huge, absolutely. It's, it's mind boggling. I think out there, there's the, the perception that farmers are on the elderly side and that the younger generation have abandoned farming. Is that true or, or are young people coming back to it? And um, yeah, there, there is a lot, the age profile is too high. Uh, no disrespect to any older, older, older farmers out there, but the age profile is too high. You could be talking, I think the age profile, the average age of a farmer is over 60. And that's what really is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And look, um, there's several reasons for the several factors to take into play. Look, the profit profitability of farms is one thing. Uh, there's plenty of good jobs, uh, good paying jobs. We're well educated, the country, and we're taking advantage of that. I think the average industrial wage is about forty five thousand. And you take the average each farmer uh, is earning about thirty three, thirty five thousand, and that's the average figure. You know, yeah. uh, the number of family farms are disappearing. There's no question about that. I think there's, compared to 20 years ago, uh, I think there's 30% less farmers. Now that's across all, all across across the board. Is that through consolidation or, or people leaving farming altogether? Probably? Um, consolidation, a combination, a combination. Like if, if you if you want to uh, stay as a, fam- a farmer, you have to progress. Like I... I'd rather not be leasing extra land. It's a case I haven't if I want to survive, uh, yeah. increase the workload. Uh, either is a bit of like a treadmill, like you know, running to stand still to a degree, you know. But um, coming back to your why I'm on the show tonight is uh, look, the industry can help from uh, uh, um, there from their end of it. I know the 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 they were looking to increase, they were calling for the increase of tillage area here, uh, and we appreciate that, the, the, the drinks industry, you know, but yeah. uh, it's um, it's uh, it's in their hands to a degree, you know, uh, I've, you've, I'm blue in the face saying, or explaining our point of view, and you, you've, you've been following me yourself, Serge and what I've been saying, and the group there is grain growers have been saying, and making our case, and I yeah. think we're making it quite well, uh, but yeah. things are moving along. Uh, I don't want to be anyway negative. That negative, it's a positive. Uh, I think the growth of the whiskey in or the Irish whiskey uh, has is very welcomed by, by the tillage farmer. But I think more could be done. Um, yeah, well, maybe uh, you'd like to tell us what you think in terms of what the industry and I suppose what the whiskey industry and what the government can do to help tillage farmers. Because you are coming under increasing competition, mainly from the dairy sector, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, to give you a, a brief outline, like I told you, I lease my uh, um, eighty odd acres as well. That's that's very common. Uh, that farmland is leased as well, um, and very common in tillage industry. 
and we're losing that land. The area tillage has dropped uh, 20% in the last 10 years alone uh, due to the, we are not able to compete with the dairy sector. That's the simple reality. They're, they're a more yeah. profitable industry. They're a more organized industry, to be fair to them, a uh, very organized industry, to be fair to them. Uh, they, I mentioned Arbor Bay Airport before, uh, the dairy industry is very good at promoting itself. It has four, five, ten, six different bodies uh, promoting the industry. You're, you're talking about the Irish, the Irish Council, you know, or NUA, uh, you know, Borbia, Borbia. You have several bodies uh, promoting them and fair play to them, you know, yeah. and that's, that helps. We are so far behind in that regard. Uh, it's not funny, but we are. There is uh, chinks of light. Uh, there's no question about that. No, well, uh, I mean... Certainly, with the work you're uh, you're doing with the Irish grain growers, I think the voice is coming out there. But um, yeah. from yeah, just on, I suppose to expand on your question, what you asked me there, Serge, like there's a couple of positives that's after happening. I, uh, we talked about the the different grades of barley uh, uh, that was required for and the lower grade protein for distilling. There has been a, a start made on paying extra. At all, we have to look at the bottom line when we grow, grow these crops, and sure. the distilling industry is uh, is responding, uh, yeah. not quickly, from my view, but that's my view. But they are responding to be fair to them, uh, but they need to uh, they do need to act more, uh, and that's been me being a farmer and want more. But we do we have to we 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 have to look at the bottom line and look at our competition. We looked at you mentioned six straw barley there. That's more yields better, so that makes more sense to grow. Yeah. Um, malt and barley if you look now these are not our figures we look at Jagas figures the national body there the, um, the most profitable crop to grow or grain to grow is winter wheat first crop winter wheat uh, mm. which is feed second most profitable is uh, winter barley winter feed barley and right. then come your malt and barley so if you were a farmer and you you were given a choice, you're going to go to the most profitable crop, you know. And, yeah, of course. Yeah, and, you know that's that's the reality of the situation that has occurred, and then we are competing with the dairy industry as well. Um, yeah. And I do think there's huge room for improvement there. But uh, just the po positives, I suppose that's one positive that they are beginning to react to the yeah. distilling industry. I will recognise that, and a new initiative is in place as well. Uh, Started by Chagas, uh, IT Carlo, and one of the colleges in Dublin, which I cannot think the name of at present. Uh, they started up a stakeholder group from the, for the whole chain of uh, the industry is involved. Now the brewing industry is involved as well. The acronym is Dabbing. Uh, it's to do with the brew and brewing and distilling, and building the Irish capacity of using Irish grain. Uh, sure. It's, had his first stakeholder meeting there a couple of months ago. So that's positive stuff, Serge. Um, yes. There's no question about that. Uh, but the bottom line, um, uh, you we you talk about your bottle of whiskey. I don't uh, I don't know what you paid for a bottle of whiskey lately. Depends what you're buying. Uh, uh, what you're <laughs> Too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, from my from my calculations, I think the, the value of the grain in that bottle of whiskey is about fifteen to twenty cent. And right. we're paying 25 to 85 to 105 to, uh, I think there's a bottle of whiskey in the airport for 5,000 euro, maybe in wrong. Oh, you can pay what you want, yeah. You can pay what yeah, you want. Yeah, you know what I mean, you know, so, and we talk about that 15, 20 cent, that's the value of the grain, but that's, we have to take our costs out of producing that, uh, ton, uh, that grain for that as well. So yeah. if, well, if you look at it in the, from that point of view, uh, uh, very little would uh, in the price of the bottle of uh, whiskey would change, transform our industry as well. And that's where I see there is room for improvement. Uh, all yeah. from going, the, I, I, I'm delighted with the, the new project, though. I really am delighted. I think it's the first step in the uh, one uh, big step. And that's right run, by, run by Chagas, is it? Who's the farming yeah. body? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. It's a national. It's a run. It's a government aided body. Um, yeah. So they're they're a substantial body. So that's positive stuff. There's no question. Um, in terms of, that. I suppose, all, all the developments that have happened recently in terms of uh, terroir and traceability, I think that the farming profile has obviously been elevated. Is that something that helps at all? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, no, the farmers always have been, uh, down through the years, have been associated with the market on whiskies, Irish whiskies and beers. Um, it's, um, how do you say, it? there's a couple of exciting developments. You had, you had Mark Rainier there on, you had, I think there's Tipperary as yes. well. They're, they use, they have the farmer front and centre, I suppose, of each bottle of whiskey, uh, which we welcome, we, like, no, no grain, no whiskey at the end Absolutely. of the day. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so we are the, the most important link. In my view, we're the most important link. Uh, yeah. There's a lot, uh, there's a lot involved in making whiskey. We all know that, and a lot of technical stuff. But if you don't have the grain, you've none to work with. And Absolutely. they are putting the farmer front and center. A couple of these, I, I think, what war for whiskey have done to the Irish uh, in the industry, whiskey industry, is uh, nothing but positive for the tillage farmers themselves. Uh, yeah. I do believe in terror myself, by the way. Uh, there's no okay. question about it. Uh, um, you're on my own farm, I could. Uh, terror is what uh, to do with taste, as we all know that as well. And uh, there's, I, I cattle on my farm, and they'd have a favourite place to go graze uh, on the farm, and that's and uh, a few years ago. So I totally, you don't have to convince me about terror. It's, you see it in person. You see it in person. Yeah, yeah actually working on, on different soil types. So, um, yeah. You know. Do you see? Does most of your barley go for brewing or more go for distilling? And what's uh, going to break down? Um, it's up to late. Recently, it would have been say 70, 30, 80, 20, depends on 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 demand. But because of the growth of the Irish whiskey industry. Is nearly it's heading for nearly 50 50 60 40 50, 50 50 you know really it's heading for direction yeah yeah that's a now, big change are, yeah yeah now the, the whole industry is changing the, uh, um, uh, slowly but surely as well uh, yeah. so it is um how would the mechanics of it works you know uh Bormalt are a big multinational company they're based all over the world and that's yeah. uh you know so they have their way of running the business as well and Malden Company of Ireland is co-owned uh, with Glombia and I think it's uh, Kerry. Uh, Kerry Group, Ireland. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, there is there's potential to grow the industry here. You know. I mean, one thing I have noticed, and I don't have the figures at hand, is although the acreage has stayed relative, I mean, in the long term, it's it's been coming down. I think it's kind of stabilized now. But overall... Yeah. What's amazing is that the yields have actually increased despite the the shrinking acreage. Is that down to new technology and new grains and, and new strains, or is it down to some other factors? Uh, there's there's a few factors involved. Uh, how we manage the, the research and development that goes into managing crops. Uh, uh, is it's uh, ongoing uh, how we manage uh, from the seabed preparation to time of harvest to um, the different varieties like uh, the research that goes into bringing a new variety to to for the grammar to farmer to grow there's a huge yeah. amount of work into that it's uh, we are we we've a lot of things down to a fine art at the end yeah. of the day and that was as developed uh, you know there's a we lot mostly down to research by the likes of chagas and farmers themselves on the ground and you know the sea companies and you know yeah. we talk um there's different ways we do genetically modified and there's genetically engineered and there's you know that's are we using are we using genetically modified seeds here in ireland no no uh we do not grow GM crops here in this country, genetically modified crops here uh, okay. in this country. We're not allowed to uh, by EU, by the EU. Yeah. Yes, uh, just to mention that what other grains are used for, we import two thirds of our feed re requirements here uh, into this country. And a lot of that is GM grain. Uh, that's fed to livestock and pig and poultry and used in other, other facets of society here as well. Yeah, no, I mean, no. would you be in favour of seeing GM crops or or not? Um, Controversial question. <laughs> it's it, that that's look. We all know about uh, the big lawsuits and whatnot associated with it. Uh, yeah. Personally, I wouldn't be in favour uh, of it. The GM technology, uh, 
genetically engineered uh, engineering is one something that we should be seriously considering uh, yeah. here. Uh, if we want to reach, I mentioned before about you, the use of chemicals and pesticides uh, on our farms, sure. that could play a major role in that. Yeah. So good. So good. Tell me, and, uh, uh, how many how many cereal farmers are there in Ireland? Uh, there's about six, seven thousand full time, and then to be uh, another six or seven thousand, uh, or five, six thousand part times, or have mixed farms. Uh, a lot of tillage farmers have livestock on their uh, farms as well, or poultry or pigs as well. Right. So a lot of what we call mixed farming, uh, yeah. uh, the, which helps uh, with our, what we call integrated pest management as well. Like, you know, we can grow grass crops as good as grain crops as well, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, we're famous throughout the world for the quality of, of our, our crop, our cereals, and uh, wheat, barley, and oats, I guess. Uh, what is it about Ireland that makes it so successful in, in uh, producing such a quality product? Um, location, location, location. Uh, we're, we're, where we're located, we, we have a temperate climate. Uh, we get plenty of wet days and plenty. We, we, our climate doesn't get too warm. Uh, no. It's ideal growing. It's, it's ideal growing conditions, uh, basically. Now. We're all talking about climate change as well, so uh, I'd like to mention that. The yeah, have you the, seen that? Uh, have you seen that affect you? Uh, yeah, we have a couple of droughts uh, that we're not so used to. Look, there has been droughts before. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, the EU is driving us towards more to be more greener. I suppose we, as a sector, though, here in Ireland, the tillage sector. Uh, when you talk about tons of carbon being produced, we ton, produce about half a ton of carbon per hectare compared to right. other sectors. Your beef industry is about four ton per hectare and your dairy industry is about eight ton per hectare. So wow. it, that's a useful marketing tool for anyone in the in the, in the industry in, uh, that's working in the whiskey industry uh, is the low carbon output output of the tillage sector in this country. Yeah. Uh, we are We are a very green product. Yeah, I didn't uh, so. realize the difference was so big between dairy yeah. and... Uh... Yeah, it's cereal, huge, you know, huge yeah. in that regard. And it's a one, one very positive message that the industry could portray. Absolutely, absolutely. Tell me, the other thing is that in between farming, you managed to head the Irish Grain Growers Group. Could you tell us a little bit about how that started and how it's grown and how many members you have now and, and what your objectives are? Um, yeah. The Irish Grain Growers officially started in 2016. Uh, we were originally called the Irish Mall Growers, and you mentioned at the start of your program there, or uh, when I was talking to you earlier at least, uh, on the, what we're getting for grain. We were just not, we were just not viable. And yes. We, realized, we thought we weren't getting our, our voice wasn't loud enough, I suppose. That's uh, why we started out, and we, we, tell, we think we have a very good uh case to make for ourselves uh, as a sector, as tillage farmers, you know, uh, we just thought the voice wasn't being heard loud enough. That's how we started out, a uh, few farmers getting together and, and then a few more get involved and next thing we have a group for, formed and we formed officially in 2016. I'm the, presently I'm the chairman of it and Clive Carter uh, for the National Power Championships so we'll hopefully go ahead in, in September is the secretary at present. Uh, and we've about 100 members uh, currently, paid up members are currently, but it's hard to gather up membership now with uh, COVID, you know, you can't yeah. call the farms and there is restrictions there. And uh, But we're, we're, we're on the go about four or five years now. Uh, so we and are, the, objective, um, the objective of the group is just to have a voice, is it, uh, that the government listens to and the industry listens to? Yeah, yeah, that'd be one of the objectives. Uh, we are at the stakeholder at Capri Farm. I, I don't know if you're familiar, your listeners are and viewers are of um, what we're rules we're governed by. And uh, Capri Farm is currently, we're a stakeholder at that table at the minute. That's um, basically outlining how we farm into the future. Um, we'd love to get more, as we say, we're part of the stakeholder group for the, this new dabbing uh project uh, we're at that table we're we speak to likes of the chagas we're meeting ministers uh, we're you know we're, we'd love to get more involved with the uh, up, we'd like to see more opportunity for the sector being developed uh, sure. as well and i'd love to see a, a closer link uh, 
to to the distilling industry as well uh, and have have uh, you know advice for yes. the sector uh, from instead of uh, sometimes being uh, loggerheads with each other uh, just say uh, you know get common teams and work on them and get get them over the line I yeah. and are you finding that uh, that's starting to happen Bobby are you starting to see yeah. more communication with the different groups and you know the voice of the farmer being heard yeah, 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 yeah. I, I will say that without doubt. Uh, I think the, uh, the Irish Farmers Journal even covered that last week. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to promote another media outlet, but uh, the reality oh. is that they, they, they expressly said that last week that the, the tillage sector is now seen in a different light compared to even three or four years ago. And I'd like to think the grain growers had uh, a good role in getting our... Yeah voice out there and our positives out there and our, our Belair field is currently on our presence or so we're, we're helping the organ in, in that as well so uh yeah. i suppose we and our main all main goal is to put uh, to be keep tillage farming very viable and more profitable you know that's yeah. the reality of the situation you know we, what can you do bobby to attract younger people into it is it purely a financial or can you promote the the lifestyle elements of it as well or what can be done yeah um financially look young farmers um are heading forward towards the dairy industry and that's yeah. purely the one that's more profitable and tillage farms are ideal to expand the dairy industry into uh you can grow. We tend to have more fertile tillage land is usually more fertile and drier type land, and it means a longer grazing season for the dairy sector. Uh, you know, so it's ideal. And we are located. We're in. We're, we're all neighbors neighbors of each other. The tillage industry and the dairy industry is based in the midlands, southeast and south. So we're you know we're in the same zones, I suppose, for what yeah. way of putting it. Um, me personally, I love being a tillage farmer. I uh, love it. Um, yeah, what is it about it, Bobby, that you love? Is um, it the early mornings and the late nights? No, <laughs> so in between the holes. Uh, I suppose being my own, uh, being my own boss uh, is an uh, attractive. Uh, uh, the excitement of the technology that's there. It, every day is a learning day. Uh, um, my wife often asks me, what are you doing today? And I genuinely say to her, I don't know. It depends if it starts raining. It depends on uh, what crops up, you know. So yeah. uh, it's not mundane. It's there's something new every, practically every day. You know, some days you know exactly what you're doing, or some weeks you know exactly what you're doing. But um, you walk a crop and you might see a problem, and you need to go address that straight away. Or you know, it's 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 the very the variance in the day. Uh, sure. And each, each day is different, and there is quite periods as well, which I like as well. Uh, yeah. on, the, on the farm um, if you're a livestock farmer you are you know you're with livestock every day of the week and then, and, you know whereas you can I, I can spend days uh, well having to walk out onto the farm which I like yeah. as well you know it's not all about it's not all about work at the end no of the no day. absolutely I think yeah and I think that's what's really comes across is the farmers that are in it now the cereal farmers that are, are doing it because they love doing what they're doing yeah. Otherwise, they otherwise they choose dairy, wouldn't? They? Yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So the dairy farmers are hardworking people. They're yeah. hardworking people. To be fair to them, but we are hardworking people when we are working to, you know. Yeah. Um, but we we are excited by, uh, uh, I suppose, the machinery that's there, the new uh, breeds of seed that's coming along, the new, uh, you know, new ways, new types of styles of farming. We. Uh, What's becoming more popular is that you don't plow uh, anymore. Uh, in some oh, really? Farms. Yeah, yeah. It's called eco till, where you don't actually plow the soil. You just um, um, plant. You basically, there's different methods of that as well. There's a few different methods of, of that as well. So there's a few wow. farmers going that route as well. So um, they're always learning. That's the one thing yeah. I, I know about. It. You're not. You're. There's nothing repetitive in the business. Uh, you're, there's always something new to learn, and yeah. and uh, I love learning off people. And I love my wife will give out to me now when I was on my phone, but now I was, now I was researching and I was reading up on articles, and I was tuning into the Irish Whiskey Magazine show to learn some, or you know, uh, reading an article. It's uh, you know, well, I have to say, I mean, I, I, I subscribe to the Irish Farmers Journal, and uh, as an insight into your world, 
uh, a superficial one maybe as it is. It, it is incredibly uh, informative of what they have there. And uh, yeah. I do see your articles in there often enough. So I think if anybody's interested in really getting to the, to the roots of what's uh, farming's about, the Irish Farmers Journal is certainly a good entry point. I have a couple oh, yeah, of questions yeah. here, Bobby, for you. Um, a couple yeah. of questions from our listeners here. So first question is from Connor Ryan. Uh, he says, is there any new barley varieties that uh, on the scene that are looking promising for use in distilling? Yeah, there's always new varieties coming on stream. I suppose uh, when we look at, we mentioned earlier about mi winter malting varieties, uh, there's a new variety, Craft is a new one that's out there and is proven itself, uh, spring barley varieties. Uh, the trade and trusted at the minute is a variety called Planet. Uh, yes. Other varieties like uh, Laureate, uh, we... The cubby, the sea companies that I mentioned, they're they're working, they're fascinating places as well. The, the the research that they do, and they could have a variety ready to go, and in the final year, uh, it could uh, just let them down, and it would not be recommended passed by the Department of Agriculture for use. Right. Uh, do I know any specific variety on the verge of coming through? Not at the minute. Uh, not yeah. at the minute. Myself personally. Um, Another question I'm, in then as well, Bobby, from uh, Jonathan Ramirez. And he says, any plans to increase capacity of other non-barley grains that might have an increased demand due to the vintage mash bill project? So I don't know if you're aware of the the ability to use not, different grains now within whiskey is, yeah, uh, yeah. is, is changing. And uh, oats and wheat and rye are going to become, I imagine, more popular. Are, are you looking at those grains? Mm -hmm. We are fully aware of it. We can grow those crops. We're growing those crops as is. Uh, we try uh, oats. I, my most popular crop to grow presently are oats. And is that uh, going into porridge yeah. with uh, odlums or flour? Uh, it's actually, it's uh, glombia. Uh, I suspect the glombia is gluten-free oats, actually. They're actually my most popular crop to grow. Uh, right. Like, uh, I, I, I'm not a huge historian, but I know oats have been used a couple of hundred years ago. Um, yeah. As well, uh, a very popular. Uh, like we, our biggest acreage here in Ireland to grow was oats up to 100 years ago. Um, uh, you know, because of the horse disappeared, the oats disappeared out of the field as well. There's no need to feed the horse. The All tractors right. took up horses. You know, but, um, a lot of work. I know a couple of distilleries are using uh, wheat currently. Yes. Um, uh, they're doing like, like experimenting with uh, wheat currently, and I think they're it's been quite successful with them as far as I know, uh, replacing in, in instances, instances in replacing the maize that's imported um, yeah. to make the whiskey as well. So presumably uh, that's but, something you would like to see more of, more use yeah. of wheat than uh, than maize, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a you probably know yourself, Serge, a, a specific. Uh, Gripe about the the, the whiskey act. Sorry, and the life. Now we can see there. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apologize. I was wondering. Sorry. No um, problem. Um, a personal gripe I have myself is about the the PGI of Irish whiskey. Uh, um, I was disappointed in in what was uh, brought forward by the Department of Agriculture. Uh, myself personally on it. Uh, in it. Uh, I completely understand why the whiskey industry and the drinks industry in general looked for it. Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't. We all know about uh, uh, other parts of the world trying to copy what we have, uh, and we want to completely understand that. But one aspect of that I was disappointed in uh, in the technical files was that uh, we have cream products as well, like your Baileys and whatnot as well. You have in those files. You have to use Irish cream from Irish cows. Uh, to call the the call it call it an Irish cream, uh, drink. Uh, but there is no mention of the having to use Irish grain, uh, for Irish whiskies. Yeah. Uh, no. I now I know the, the I know the majority the majority, if not all, of the barley, except the peated barley, maybe, is Irish. It's the maize that is the issue, is it? Uh, I'd have to question you on whether all the barley is Irish. Uh, you'll have to get others that's in the industry to answer that question for you. We are fully aware of barley being imported. 
for right. the drinks industry as well. Uh, I, I'm not going to start mentioning figures there because I don't know them, but they do actually import uh, barley. The figures are there available uh, uh, from them. And, and uh, is that for distilling or for brewing? Not sure. I'm not fully sure where it's heading for, but yeah. the barley is imported. Uh, barley is imported for the use in the in the drinks industry. There's no question about that. Yeah. Uh, I look uh, on the maize point of view. I understand why the distilleries use maize. Uh, where I'd like to see what uh, being expanded is the use of like your one of your questions was there about the use of grains. Um, I'd like to see more development of new products uh, exclusively using Irish grain, whether it is barley or wheat or oats, you know, yeah. I'd like to see a push and from the drinks industry. I'd like to see a push. I, uh, I want to see the industry growing, but I'd like to see more emphasis on Irish grains in, in that. To, Do you see uh, that happening though, Bobby, at the moment? I mean, I, I'm seeing from our side that, you know, the traceability and the origin of the raw ingredients is is being used quite extensively now as a, a strong marketing tool. So I can only see that changing yeah. and becoming more favorable. Yeah, yeah. Like I mentioned, uh, War of the Distillery before, I think they have you know, changed. I think the rest will have to follow. Uh, that's my own personal view. I hope yeah. to follow. But that means they need more Irish grain. But uh, look, what we have, we want to hold on to as well from the drinks point of view, drinks industry, the whiskey sales and whatnot. We want to see them all, at the very least holding on and there's huge potential there. We know the whiskey industry was, uh, the Irish whiskey industry was the biggest in the world um, a few many moons ago. Uh, yeah. Well, why not chase that dream again of being one of the biggest in the world again, you know, but having yeah. an, an Irish grain, you know. Um, is there the capacity at the moment to fulfill uh, an increasingly growing Irish whiskey sector, or will we have to resort to import as a necessity? Um, there's no need to import grain at uh, this point, simple uh, for it, uh, in my view. Uh, there's right. no need for it at all. Uh, we've enough land, uh, about 10, about 10 percent of the grain growing here in this country is for the drinks industry. So Is that all? Yeah, yeah. About 200,000 ton is used. As, uh, and we grow about 2, two million ton of grain here in Ireland. Yeah. And that's on the land base that, that we have uh, presently. I want to see, I'd love to see the area under tillage increase substantially as well. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I think that has to increase, doesn't it, in order to, to meet the demand? Yeah, well, whether it happens or not, I don't know. Uh, the, um, that's the other part for them. Um, this is why the grain growers set up uh, as well to highlight sure. the fact that the, the area has decreased to about a quarter what we the tillage area compared to 100 years ago. So the land is available, but um, as I mentioned earlier, it's more profitable profitable to be a, a dairy farmer than a tillage farmer at the minute. And the young people follow the money, and you cannot blame them for that. You yeah. just cannot blame them for that. I mean, farms, on a positive note. And I think things were, were pretty bad in that, you know, when we spoke last and you did help us with the article in the magazine, you were talking about a 150 euro a ton. And I think now you're over the 200. Is there a, is there a premium price for super quality grain, if you like? Uh, in the drinks industry? The, yes. The, um, you're talking about your discipline. Um There's a premium... Uh, it's the way it works is uh, there's a base price for your feed and basically um, there's there's a few different ways of reaching the, the price for grain uh, for your your premium your malting barley set currently there's a model there from one companies that you get uh, you can forward sell uh, at a particular price so it currently is just over 200 euro a ton as far as I'm aware uh, yeah. next which uh, is good news uh, in, to a degree. Uh, it needs to go further, uh, a lot further. But that's more to do with the world markets rather than how the industry has reacted here so, to date. Uh, our grain prices are above the five-year average at present, about 20 euro a ton over the five-year average. Uh, we thought we very dependent on the world markets and what we get for our grain, including malt and barley. Yeah, so I suppose it is. It is pretty much treated uh, on the exchange markets as a commodity. So, yeah, yeah. Are, are, does that mean that 
factors outside Ireland are what can have a huge effect on you? Uh, 100% so. Uh, yeah. We are totally dependent on the world market for what we get for our grain. Totally dependent on us. And this is where maybe, the, I suppose, one idea or one thing facet that could be worked on from the drinks point of view. Uh, we'd love to fix in a price uh, for a certain percentage of a grain for uh at at uh, um, that we can over for a three year period for a percentage of a grain, um, right? So that, that we have a bit of a stability in our business. Like uh, you mentioned, the price of one hundred and fifty euro a ton there. Uh, that the grain could go back to that very 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 easily. Uh, uh, that's de- that's so that's purely determined by mm-hmm. commodity and exchange markets. Totally, wow. totally, wow. Serge. Totally. That's the problem we have, and um. This is where the industry could react a little bit as well. Uh, prepare, prepare to for for buy uh, uh, grain at a certain price for a fixed price for the next three years. You know, and and is there a I premium paid? Is there a premium paid for organic or biodynamic uh, grain? They're definitely for organic. I'm not so sure they are biodynamic. I assume so as well. Yeah, uh, organic grain is a. Uh, um, it's uh, it was more cost associated, uh, or you more get, cost and lower yield, isn't it? Lower yield, but not more cost per se. It's uh, you just have more yield, so your overall costs are that be higher. Uh, but uh, currently, not so sure about the drink saint element of it. But to be an organic tillage farmer is more profitable than to be a commer- uh, conventional farmer. Now, whether it's not, there's demand for Irish grains. You mentioned the likes of porridge there before, so there is demand there for yeah. um, why more farmers aren't going that route. Um, there's not uh, not enough support. Um, you know, you take the organic scheme there, the government aided organic scheme there, like the, that you can't just turn into an organic farmer. Uh, you have to apply to be an organic farmer, and it's only a certain amount of, uh, of a budget set aside. As mm-hmm. well, so not just a uh, matter of just oh, I'm going to be an organic farmer in the morning. You know, there's a, a few factors in, in to consider. You know, yeah. But, uh, we talk so about it, what the what the government can do to help farmers uh, at the moment. Obviously, there's uh, the extreme situation now that we we do have COVID, and we didn't really touch on what effect that has had on on the industry. Can you give us an idea of how COVID has affected farming? Um, the, the normal run of things hasn't, I haven't been affected personally on running my farm with COVID, uh, the actual day-to-day running on my farm. To be fair to industries, uh, they have reacted very well on being very organised in making sure crops are grown the way they should be grown and delivery of same. So the industry has reacted very well in that regard and farmers have as well. We yeah. we tend to work a lot on our own anyway, on uh, in tractors or wherever sure. we're at. You know, you're but, outdoors um, all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in that regard, um, my own here personally, my wife is uh, a nurse, uh, so I know front front line. You know, so it's coming. We had that risk there the, the whole time, like waiters, and thankfully, uh, no consequences of it. Thankfully, and hopefully, it stays that way. Um, as well. well. Would. Yeah. yeah. What about yeah. Brexit? Has that had an impact? Yes, yes. Um, we we do align ourselves a good bit with the the English or British farmers uh, when they, for the like types of husbandry standards we meet. Our climate is fairly similar, so we use uh, like what we how we manage our crops here in the, the in this part of the world compared to say the south of France or Spain would be different. So yes. we do have a lot in common. Uh, just a typical example of how it affected me uh, on my own farm this spring. Uh, my one of my tractors had a, a small fault, and I ran rang my uh, local garage to get it repaired. And usually, they'd have the, they had a, a parts that had to be got, and usually that'd be the next day delivery. To be fair to them, they're very good, you know. But because of Brexit, it took five days to get the part. Uh, right. So that. That's the type of effect it can, small effects that had us uh, on the likes of myself running the business. Uh, uh, um, the, what you call it, we don't know some of the taxes and the, uh, have changed as well for the imports uh, as well, you know, of products. I mean, do you export as well? 
very little grain is exported out of Ireland. We import okay. the amount of grain that's used in, in total. We use about 6 million tonne of grain in this country. Now, I tell, and you put on with your maize and your soya and your products as well there. That's what we call grain. So yeah. we export very little um, grain. We don't have to. Uh, we don't. All the, it's all used here in Ireland by right. most of the feed industry. Um, yeah. We actually import a lot of flour for to make for our breads as well. We very very little of. I saw that. I saw a lot of flour was imported as well. Yeah, yeah, and the tariff on that has had an effect on the bakeries. Um, sure, it's all the stuff that I won't explain, but uh, in the time we're an increase in the price of a slice pan, you know, for because of Brexit, so. Bobby, could you give us, uh, just thinking about there, and I meant to ask is, can you give us a, an outline of your different activities throughout the year? So the key points, obviously, you've just completed sowing. What happens now between this and the next cycle? Yeah, um, I the two parts of my sowing season, one starts now and the other starts next October, uh, September, October. I sow winter crops and spring crops. Um, yeah. So I have pre-sowing, I plough the fields uh, and sow them in one, what I call a one-pass season, the tills and plants the crops and grain at the same time. You'd roll the fields, uh, I'd be applying fertiliser to the fields uh, to try and reach the um, part that we'll be trying to reach the this distilling grade and brewing grade as well, so that you'd be managing the element of it, you'd be, we spray the crops uh, with uh, with uh, for diseases and for weeds we'd have as well as the barley growing weeds grow as well like in your back garden sure. you know we manage those as well uh you'd be walking the crops uh, i currently have a field of oats that's uh i'm keeping an eye on a particular pest called leather jacket uh, uh i have to deal with that you know so you're doing a lot of crop walking and managing of the crops from now on um till uh my harvest will start in probably mid July. Uh, yeah. Of course, the engine crops in between, you know, uh, keeping an eye on them and get, catching up with uh, paperwork as well. You know, so we are busy, busy. All You're the highly time. regulated then as well, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. The EU are probably the most highly regulated area in the world when it comes to looking after uh, our crops. Uh, compared yeah. to other parts of the world, and it's a uh, uh, there's a two tier two tier system as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, the, the standards we have to comply to uh, can, can be way higher than other parts of the world. We have products that we use to spray our crops with to keep disease uh, off the crops. You talk, you mentioned about um, high yielding crops. You know, this yeah. is partly why we've reached these high yielding crops is because of uh the science behind it and the products that we use on our crops and some of the pro products that we have used that are banned now but are not banned in other parts of the world yes right. grain can come in from other parts of the world that use the banned crops and we have to com compete with those uh crops you know uh another example is the tractor go back to the tractor there um we have there there's different the emissions from a tractor are are being cleaned up. You probably most people have know of uh, the Ad Blue in their car, diesel car. You know, yeah. Some people will be familiar with that. We have that in our tractors. Uh, other parts of the world, we have to pay for that technology. Basically, uh, I I've been told uh, by one of our members, uh, growing ground members, that a tractor can cost up to twenty five thousand more just to have this technology in your tractor compared to other parts of the world that don't have, insist on this type of technology. So right. there's another competitive disadvantage we have. We have to pay more for our tractor because of this technology that the EU ask, ask us to farm to uh, yeah. as well. So we, to be fair, uh, it's we, as the EU states, um, we are very highly, uh, we're very highly regulated, but we do produce very, very high standard uh, crop. Yeah. I mean, is Ireland is Ireland correctly labelled as producing the best barley in the world? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Simple as. <laughs> not sure. any difference. Yeah, no, short, yeah. short, sweet. Traceability wise, husbandry wise, um, we have a fully traceable um, uh, crop uh, crops with a unique provenance as well, uh, low greenhouse gas emissions. Um, 
you know that for that itself is a pure a very strong marketing material for anyone that wants to use our brands including the drinks industry and the distilling industry but yeah. what but the raw material that the, the the industry uses is uh top of the class top of the yeah. class you know, the quality and uh traceability and you know or carbon carbon value or eco or ecosystems uh you know we we, we tick all the boxes as a sector we really yeah. do tell me are you optimistic about the future bobby uh, and where do you see the future of tillage farming in this country um optimistic look you have to be optimistic to be in our game uh to be honest with you uh we are realistic but we are optimistic as well uh because of the advancements of our technology because of projects like the dabbing project that i mentioned earlier with the likes of chagas uh we yeah. we we think the sector has turned a corner uh, to a degree thanks to the likes of the irish grain grower group uh i am optimistic for the future uh, uh people because of COVID, people are more aware of where their food is coming from, what parts yes. of the world. You only have to look at the, what happened when the when the the cargo ship got locked in the canal there lately. How how the whole world revolves and where everything is coming from. Yeah, uh, locally produced grain is the most uh, uh, the best grain to use uh, from an environmental point of view as well. And I do, would recommend anyone to. Shop local, uh, shop rather than shop local, use local as well. You know? Yeah, and everything is, you know, you're doing like one of the key languages that has changed in the last two to three years uh, uh, for tilly, uh, for farmers and tillage farmers is uh, the environment and the carbon. They are yes. new language for us, and everything. A lot, huge amount of focus is uh, being is coming from the likes of the Europe. But the yeah. consumer has come on board as well on that. The, those that drink the whiskeys, those that drink, eat their eat their food into the mouth three times a day, four times a day. You know, uh, they have to be. They are coming, becoming more conscious, and they should come become more conscious. And we yeah. do have the best grains in the world. Yeah, for, I, I definitely uh, think your your voice is coming through louder than it has been in the past, and I hope that does continue. Uh, yeah, are, are you partial to a tipple of whiskey yourself, or? Um, yeah, the odd time, at the odd time, I'm more of a, uh, I'll have to admit, you're, you have me on the wrong show now to be promoting yeah. whiskey. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I'm, wow. uh, my, my favourite tipple at the moment is actually uh, a Leash Grain produced uh, 12 acres of beer. I'll, I'll probably give them a plug there, but they are, that's my favourite tipple at the minute. Yeah, I okay. like whiskey, yeah. I like drinking whiskey. I like uh, my favourite uh, and uh, to make an Irish coffee, my favourite whiskey to use is Bushmills whiskey, not the uh, you get. Uh, okay. Um, and to throw it into whisk, uh, an Irish coffee, um, I would drink Powers whiskey if it was asked. To, if it was asked of, for a preference, it would be Powers whiskey. Uh, Very good. But uh, I do have a conflict of interest now that they do use important me. So. Oh. <laughs> but that's we can't we can't be we all just can't be perfect. But if you ask me. The drink, the whiskey it was to drink will be powers. I haven't tried uh, my local neighbours whiskey yet, and I do plan to. Uh, David Walsh Chemist there is part of the project there with Warford Dist Distillery, so yes. I do plan to put my a bottle of his whiskey as well at some stage. Uh, I just love the whole principle. I really do uh, of the ter terroir and uh, different different whiskeys. Or from, it's, well, I'm it's certainly seeing. I'm certainly seeing farmers getting a lot more recognition in the last few years, uh, not only from the, yes, from the traceability point of view as well, but also from the hard work and graft that goes into the work you do. So I'm hoping our listeners kind of get a, a an idea of the amount of work that goes into producing what you do. And what is it yeah. about you? What is it about you love? <laughs> Um, what I love is learning, yeah. reading and learning more and more. Uh, look, I love I love being out in the field. I love being out on the tractor, uh, you know, plowing and so on the crops. I love it. Uh, yeah. There is stress related to it as well. Don't get me wrong. Uh, weather weather can have a play have a with your 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 income. Uh, we're yes, very weather dependent. I I love I love walking outside my back door and and and, and in my place of work. 
Well, it's a lovely neck of the woods, uh, the Strad Valley there. Yeah. If yeah. somebody wants to get more information, Bobby, about, you know, either getting into farming or, or learning more about what you do, what would be the best resources? Um, Chagas would be a good place to start. Just Google, uh, you know, Chagas, the Chagas Authority there, or the Chagas body. Uh, I'm not giving the right title, but Chagas is a good place to start. I am, anyone can pick up the phone to me if they want. I, I'm always on the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but well, anyone can go to your, phone. is it an Irish Grain Growers Group that I Yeah, yeah. Well, go to our, um, the likes of our Facebook page and our Twitter page and uh, to get more, our, our website is more just, uh, how would you say, the basic information, you know, members, membership form and whatnot like that. Um, yeah. If they want to get farming, there's, um it's, it's quite difficult to, to be honest with you to get into into farming now if you're a young person you know, the fair as well and more work needs to be done one thing the government could do and you mentioned the government before is to do to do a little bit more work on that are you working more with the universities and the colleges um we have yeah we are we are they're, they're contacting us there uh, uh projects that we wouldn't even be dreaming of uh asking us for for support, I only had a phone call from a non, it's not a university, from from man wanting to do a bit of research on uh, um, the wheat um, and uh, the use. Uh, he's thinking uh, he's a new way of using the wheat. He thinks he has. So we're getting those th types of uh, communication all the time. To be fair, well, the good. university, you know, yeah. the, um, I keep mentioning the dabbing project there. I, I, I'm excited about that, but colleges, I mean, they're amazing places. You know, I went yeah. to college myself, um, went to uh, Carlo IT myself uh, when, in my youth, you know, but um, yeah. it, there are amazing places and uh, the, the amount of research that's uh, going on there and we'd love to work more with the with the colleges as well. Um, yeah. The research is our future at the end of the day, research and development. Yeah. That's where our future lies. Uh, and Certainly, attracting the young, attracting the younger generation, I can imagine, is challenging, but but essential. Yeah, 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 yeah. No more work needs to be done. On it. There's no question about that. There's no question about that. But Serge, one thing I'd love to mention as well. Uh, we. Oh. Have I lost you, Bobby? So I would. Sorry, could you say that again, Bobby? I think we lost you there for a second. Yeah, no, I, well, uh, your listeners there, and we'd love to work more closely. If there's anyone who has a particular project to have in mind, uh, we, we, we'd love to hear from your listeners there as well. If they have that, and in particular, they, from a drinks point of view, from a, a whiskey or, or gins and whatnot point of view, uh, we'd, if there's a cl more closely related, um, yeah. or if you want to contact us, you've mentioned our group there before, we have email address, we have all that available there. And I'm sure well, we'll that share that as well. We'll share that on the post, your your details, and if anybody does have any money questions. Uh, Bobby, I've kept you well over the hour, and I could yeah. probably keep you for another hour because I just find it fascinating because it, it's so much part of our heritage, and you're so much the bedrock of what goes into producing Irish whiskey, but also at a cultural level, you know, farming is so important to this country and the work you yeah. guys do, I think needs to be recognized more than it is even. I'm glad to see it's changing, but I think yeah. the work you're doing and the, like the work that Chagas are doing through the dabbing project and so forth are really helping. So yeah. I just yeah. want to thank you. I think, I think I wouldn't be wrong in saying the, the whole Irish whiskey community is very grateful for the, the hard work that you do and, and the quality of the product that you produce and the support you give the industry. So thank you very much for, for being our guests. And uh, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add. Uh, no, I can't think of anything else. I, I can't. Um, what I add, look, um, we're, we're, we're proud. We're proud. We're proud Irish tillage farmers. Uh, uh, the soil we work with and the grain that comes from that soil that go, go, goes into the products that you drink. Um, uh, we're proud of that fact, you know, yeah. uh, the whole link there. And I'd love to see it increasing more, uh, to be honest with you. I'd love to see a closer link. And Serge, you're on my farm before and you've ever seen, hopefully when oh, the lockdown... Oh, we'll be, be down again. Yeah. If um, only if it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the country that's uh, often overlooked and not far from Dublin. 
No, we're less than an hour. An yeah. hour. I, I can be in the city centre of Dublin at, uh, in an hour, so I can. Yeah. I can. I haven't, haven't actually been in Dublin. You can't travel anywhere. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully that will uh, this year. It's, uh, it's been a tough time and everyone and not seeing each other. And look, uh, if you want to ever want to be on the farm to do a cover feature, that's something that's of interest to your uh, to your viewers. By all means, think about it there, and you're more than welcome. Awesome. Oh, absolutely. More We're more. always delighted to be able to share your news and what you're you're up to. Uh, yeah. I think uh, Jennifer was there from Tipperary just sort of saying uh, she's disappointed that you weren't plugging her whiskey. But, but you, can have, Jennifer, you can have that. Send me, on, with her. send me on a bottle there or a ribbon on it there and I'll, I'll do a review. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I should try that. But look, um, as I said, Bobby, thank you very much for your time. I know you've had a long, difficult week and it's been incredibly busy. I hope you get a few days off now to, uh, uh, to relax. And well, uh, It'll be shorter hours. And Serge, appreciate you being on the show and I hope your viewers learned a little bit at the very least and um, yeah. delayed to be on the show. Delayed and best look for yourself as well. You're, well, you're a pioneer. Thank you. Well. well, thank you very much. And I, uh, you know, I always love chatting to you because it's just so in insightful and... Uh, Great to hear a success, and I, I can only get better. You can only get exactly. better. So and we'll have a look to that some days, Serge. And Absolutely, we'll I promise you that. I promise. As soon as it's all we'll over, we'll be out that way. We we'll get the temporary oh. whiskey there as well. So to, Absolutely. to do that. Absolutely. Well, you, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> You're in our good books again. Okay, look, Bobby. Thanks a million again, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Good enough, Serge. Take care. Bye. Stay safe and well. Bye bye. Pardon? Stay safe and bye well. Bye-bye. Bye. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, everybody, for that. Uh, it was really, I found it very interesting. I hope you did. It's a, a real insight. And, you know, I think giving the farmers the, the nod and the sign of appreciation for what they do, there is no whiskey without these guys, and the quality of the whiskey is hugely important. So um, thank you to them. And uh, as I said, we'll, po we'll post the details of how to find out more about farming and uh, and the likes and the Irish Grain Growers Group and Chagas as well. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we have a, a tune back. We're going to talk with Stephen McGuinness from Ecklenville Distillery. So we'll post more information about that during the week. And uh, thank you for joining us. Stay safe and we'll speak to you soon. Good evening. Thank you.